Welcome out to another episode of It's All Been Done Radio Hour. We have another Meet the Cast for you. I'm Jerome Wetzel, creator of the show, and I am here with our newest troop member, Beth Muir. Hello, everybody. Hello, Beth. So, give us your whole story. Now, uh, <laughs> we'll start with, yeah, where did you grow up? So, actually, I kind of grew up all over the place. My dad was in the military when I was young, so I was born in Arizona, and then we moved around a bit to Texas, out to Maryland for a while while he was stationed at Fort Meade. But I spent most of my childhood in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. Hot. Yes. But it's very, very hot. And I, you know, and it's funny because I didn't understand that when the tourists would always say, oh, but it's a dry heat, Mm -hmm. until I moved out to Ohio, and I experienced the humidity here, and I'm like, oh... That's what they meant. Yeah. Did you think, stupid tourists, it's really hot and they should just acknowledge I, that? I did. I was, I, my go-to line was always, well, my oven's hot too, but I wouldn't stick my head in it. <laughs> or, it's a, or it's a dry heat uh-huh. too, but yeah. And now you miss the dry heat? I do sometimes. I went out to visit for my great aunt's 90th birthday a couple of years ago, and I remember it was over, it was about 102 degrees, mm-hmm. and I wasn't sweating at all. Oh, wow. It was just so dry. Nice. Yes. Very nice. Did you perform as a kid? I did, actually. A lot of people find this hard to believe. My partner said, I can't picture this at all, but I was an extremely shy child (laughs) when I was little. And a a big part of that was that we were moving around so much. Mm. So it made me very kind of insecure, and I had a hard time making friends. So then when we settled down in one place when I was in junior high back in Arizona... I discovered that I had a real talent for singing and acting, and that made me much more popular. Now I had a group that I belonged to, so I was always in choir, I was always in theater, and that was something I did right up until about my mid-20s. Even after I got out of high school, I did a lot of community theater. Nice. Any particular memorable roles that you really enjoyed? I think one of my absolute favorites, because it was a bucket list item of mine, When I was about 19, I played the lead in Shakespeare's As You Like It. I played Rosalind. Cool. And just to be able to do an entire Shakespeare production and have so many lines in it, Mm -hmm. it, that was amazing. And then about, I want to say, 10 years ago now, Mm -hmm. I had another bucket list role where I played the role of Judas in Jesus Christ Superstar. Nice. Yeah. That's a big one. It is, it is. And I almost didn't go for it because mm-hmm. I, when I saw the auditions, I was like, I really want to be in this show, but what kind of women's parts are in there for? I mean, it's pretty Mary. much just Mary yeah. and then background. And I was like, I can never audition for Judas. Like, they'll never go for it. And then I thought, well, if I don't audition, I don't get it. Sure. If I audition, maybe I'll get it, maybe I don't. So, yeah. And I did, and that was incredible an absolutely incredible experience. Nice. Chase played Judas too, not too long ago. I saw that. You guys yeah. Talked about? I I did. I told him I said we're we're in a very exclusive club you and I. Mm-hmm. We're, we're we're the Judases. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Where did you do that? I did that with the Arena Fair Theater up in Delaware, Ohio. Okay. Because most of the years I lived in Ohio until recently, I lived up in Delaware. Oh, okay. What brought you down into Columbus? Career. Okay. So, I spent a lot of my adult life as a stay-at-home mom, Mm -hmm. which, you know, no judgment call there. I loved it, wouldn't take it back for the world. But by the time my son was getting a bit older, I thought, I really want to go back to work. And I wasn't skilled at anything other than, you know, just being a cashier or being a secretary. And so I went back, I went to Columbus State, and I was going to go into nursing because I just didn't know what else to do. My sister was a nurse. I figured, sure, that. And while I was there, I took a programming course Mm -hmm. and fell in love, changed my major immediately. And so now I'm a software developer, and that definitely involved coming down to Columbus where the jobs were. So, What do you develop software-wise? So I work in a language called Ruby, Mm -hmm. and I'm actually, my job title is SDET, which stands for Software Development Engineer in Test. So I don't actually write the software that my company uses. I write the software that regression tests okay. the software. Nice. I write software that tests software. software. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. 
Do you like your job? I like it very, very much. I would like to eventually think about moving into more of a development role. Mm -hmm. I really like Ruby on Rails. I want to learn more about being on the other side and actually writing that code. Mm -hmm. So. But that's, you know, that's a future Have goal. somebody else test your software. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'll be, it's it's like, you know, they say everybody should have to work in customer service. Yes. You know? I, I'll be the person that totally understands what it's like to be the QA. <laughs> do the testers and the software writers, even though you're writing software too, so that sounds weird. But do you guys get along in general? Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And how much we actually work together can vary widely from mm-hmm. company to company. I have worked at companies where... You had very little interaction with the devs unless you found a bug and then you had to go back to them. Mm -hmm. And then at other places, including where I work now, I work for a place called Beyond Finance. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful little company. They help people who have gotten a little underwater kind of consolidate their debts and negotiate them down. Mm -hmm. And where I work, it is really great. Like we are involved from step one. Like as soon as the dev pulls in the card to work on, Mm -hmm. we're consulted on like what things we're going to want to test, what edge cases we want to make sure that they consider. And, you know, when I'm testing a card, if I have questions, I can pair directly with them. I'll open up a Google Hangout and we'll work together on it. So that sounds much nicer and easier than working separately. Yes, it really is. (laughs) Oh, good. So you uh, said you were a stay-at-home mom. What Was that something you had aspired to, or was that something that just kind of happened? Um, it was a little bit of both. I've always been kind of at heart romantic about the idea of, you know, just, just getting married and having kids. You know, I always wanted that. And when our son came along... We quickly discovered that I didn't have much of a choice because, you know, again, as I say, back then, you know, there wasn't a whole lot that I was skilled for. And it became very clear, like, if I had a minimum wage job, it was going to pay for the daycare. So what was the point? Right. So I stayed home, but we only ever had the one kid. My son is an only child. So it really gave me the opportunity to be in his way, in his in his life in a big way. And we are still close now. Oh, that's good. I see in your wiki wiki bio that you moved to Ohio around the age of 19. What brought you? Theater. Theater. Because I, when I was in high school, I dreamed of being a Broadway star. I did initially start college as a theater major. And I went to the University of Findlay because I got recruited there. Which seems very, very weird. Like, Who even has heard of the University of Findlay when you're growing up in Phoenix? Mm -hmm. But I did. I went there for about a year, and I just, it was not a good choice because I I couldn't afford it, and I ended up just dropping out after the first year, and then from there, I don't know what happened. I just, I got married and had a kid, and from there I just kind of forgot about my dreams other (laughs) than community theater. Did you meet your uh, significant other in college? Uh, no, actually, we were high school friends. Oh. And then he had reached out to me. He had been living in Illinois with his mom, and he mm-hmm. was looking to move somewhere else, and I invited him to come stay with me for a while. And we were just friends at the time, but then we ended up becoming involved. Oh. Got married. We were married 16 years. Wow. A lot of them were good. Yeah. Some of them were not. <laughs> Yeah, that happens, but still, 16 years is a long time, so. And then, after your son was born, you weren't performing. You took a break from performing? Yes, and I I always remember the last play I did was when I was 23 years old. I had just been cast in The Importance of Being Earnest at the Mm -hmm. Silver Phoenix Theater Company in Delaware. I was playing the role of Cecily. And one week after the cast list came out, I found out I was pregnant. Oh. So I did that whole show pregnant, which amused me to no end, because, of course, I'm playing this little Victorian virgin. Mm-hmm. And after that, I was just so busy with the baby. I didn't think about it for years, yeah. many, many years, until he was out of high school. And then I started realizing, you know what I really miss? Oh, <laughs> You have that bug that you need to do I it. did. The yeah. bug came back and bit me again. Yeah, I understand that for sure. And looks like it was around 2022 that you got back into performing? Mm-hmm. Uh, right here in central Ohio. Were you still living up in Delaware? or had you? Uh, no, at that okay. point I was living down here. Okay. 
And this is going to sound really hilarious, but it was actually a cruise that pushed me back into performing. So my parents and my grandparents are addicted to cruises. They go all the time, and they were always inviting me, and I was always saying, no, that's not my, I'm, I don't like cruises. But they had called me up because my grandmother's husband was having some health problems. He couldn't make it on this one cruise, so it was already paid for. Mm -hmm. So she calls me up, and I'm already preparing my no in the back of my head. She's like, and, you know, the cruise is totally paid for. All you would need to pay for is your ticket to London. And I said, well, I, London. Turns out this cruise was going to England, Iceland, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. Wow. So I was like, yes, yeah. yes, I will come. And when I came back from that trip, people asked me how it was, and I said, life-changing mm. and they would laugh because you know they thought I was making a joke but I really wasn't because the whole time I was out there I would look out at the ocean and think about you know god this is the first time I've ever left my own country it's the first time I've ever been on a boat it's the first time I've ever been on a cruise like what other things am I missing and that's what got me thinking what used to bring me joy that I don't do anymore like now is the time in my life that I have the time and the money to focus on myself. And I came back from that cruise, and the next day, I booked my next cruise, <laughs> <laughs> and I started looking for auditions. That's a great story. I love that. <laughs> and I know you do the Joko cruise every year now. I do. How long have you been doing that one? So we'll be going in March, and that will be our third. Okay. But because I was a big Joko fan, I had wanted to go ever since it first started, which I think at this point was 13 or 14 years ago. Okay. But I never had the money sure. back then. But since my software career took off, I was like, I can afford to splurge once a year on this. So. Are you already booked for next year? I saw the lineup we, came out. We are booked for next year, yeah. and I'm so excited that They Might Be Giants is going to be there. Nice. They were my first concert when I was 14 years old. Nice. I love them. Well, I've never seen them in concert, but I do love them. They were a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I, I learned the hard way because when I was 14, I was like 90 pounds soaking wet. Mm -hmm. And I went up to the very front row because I wanted to be in the front row when They Might Be Giants came on. And they came on and they opened with Don't Let's Start. And the crowd crushed forward. And I realized I don't belong in the pit. I am too <laughs> small. And fortunately, a couple of really big burly dudes picked me up and got me out of there before I got crushed. Oh, no. But it was a fun concert. Is that the style of music you gravitate towards? It really is. Like, my Pandora station that I listen to the most is called the Jonathan Colton station. Mm -hmm. And it plays They Might Be Giants. It plays Joko, obviously. It mm -hmm. plays Garfunkel and Oates. Oh, I love them. Lonely Island. I, I love comedy music. Yeah. It, it is my favorite. Nice. You're a musician yourself a bit, aren't you? A little bit. I, I play a little piano, a little flute, a little guitar, none of them well, <laughs> because I just don't stick to it. But I, I will always maintain that my primary talent is as a singer. I was a very good singer, which is why I was pretty confident that I could make it on the New York theater scene if I'd been brave enough to go for it. <laughs> but um, obviously, I think uh, 30 years of not keeping up with it probably hasn't done my voice a favor. <laughs> well, instead, you settled for your 293rd choice. It's all been done radio hour. <laughs> oh. You know, it's funny you say that. I found you guys on a, on a Facebook auditions group. Mm -hmm. You had put up an ad for a guest role in the, in the Christmas, the holiday special. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that's fun. I've never done any voice acting. I'm going to try this. And I got the guest role, and I was like, oh, this will be just a fun little side thing I'll do once, and it's got, like, one rehearsal and one show, so that'll be really easy. And I'll never forget, I went to the rehearsal at your house, and I just, I saw the cast, and I talked to people, and I saw how everybody interacted with each other. And I came home that night, and my partner, David, said, uh, so, did you have a good time? And I said... I want to join these people. <laughs> and we said no. no. <laughs> <laughs> and it had yeah. nothing to do with the role. It uh -huh. had nothing to do with, you know, oh, I want to perform. I want mm -hmm. a starring role. It had everything to do with these are the people that I want in my life. Oh. These are the people I want to be hanging out with all the time because everybody in this group 
is so talented and creative and fun to talk to and compassionate and and I needed more good friends in my life. Yeah. I think my, one of my favorite things is it really does feel like you're on a team or part of a group. It does not feel like anybody's trying to be the star or right. the diva or, you know, I'm a little, I play this lead role, so I'm a little better than, no, we don't have anybody like that. Yeah, and I think that's actually part of what got the cast off on that whole Beth is a cat joke for a year because, of course, I kept saying over and over again, I'm just so happy to be here. I don't care what you give me. Uh And the month that you asked me to be the cat, and literally I get to the rehearsal and all of my lines are just some variation of meow. In the the Tangler and Friends, yes. In the Tangler and Friends. The do's. Yep. And I said, this is the greatest role you've ever given me. I remember you saying that. And then I didn't realize Megan was going to run with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got some good jokes out of that. Yeah, we did. The first character you played, uh, I was looking, in December of 2022, was Doc in Life with a Voice Actor. I remember that. Kind of a mysterious character. We didn't learn much about Doc. We have seen Doc once or twice more, I think. Yeah. And we probably will see them again. In and I really two. liked the other role that I had auditioned for. And I mm-hmm. I remember that I auditioned for it in a completely different direction than mm. who you actually went go, ended up going with. Because I had played it as this very, very nervous, very anxious, kind of nerdy girl. Mm-hmm. And you went with a guy who had a completely different take on it. And it was a great take. And that's the thing. So many times I'll audition for a slot and I'm mad that I didn't get it because it's like I had a great take, and then I hear the other person's, and I'm like, "Oh, that's really good too." Damn it! <laughs> I've but, heard that kind of thing repeatedly from Catherine. But I wasn't surprised yeah. that I got the doc because I, I think I have that kind of professional voice. You do. <laughs> well, we don't want to pigeonhole you in one part either. Part of the way we do this show is we want to give you the opportunity to play lots of different parts. Right. So. If I feel like somebody's getting pigeonholed, and it does happen, then I try to look for some other mm-hmm. expansion. Let them play an alien or a monster or something different. You, you've you played some of that. Uh, you haven't been with the troupe that long, but I'm sure there'll be other opportunities for more of the weird stuff as well. Yeah. But you'd also need the more grounded, normal voices to help drive a lot hey, of the plot. Not right? everybody's a caricature all the time. No, Absolutely. So, yeah, Doc was your first role. You also played Macduff in Macbeth. <laughs> I enjoyed that one very much. I was actually surprised that I pulled off as good a Scottish accent as I did. I didn't mm. expect to be able to do it that well. And I'm sure Scottish people would tell me it was crap. <laughs> for comedy, it worked very but well. But for comedy. It worked very well. It's good enough for union work. And I remember you came in costume. You are one of the cast members that go for the I costume. I did, and sometimes. I was so glad to see that I'm not the only one. Like, obviously, we can't do full-on costumes. Sure. But every month I look at the roles, and if I, if I see, like, oh, I could put, like, a goofy little hat on for this one or put on a little cloak for this one, yeah. I'll do it because it adds something to the live show, I think. It does. I mean, Keith was traditionally the one that always did costume. He's got a cape and a hat for Alfredo, and he's got his... Full trench coat for Love privates. the trench coat for privates. But, like, Yoey's always put on the hat and stuff for Guys of the Green and worn the green shirt, you know? And Kristen, I notice, always brings her glasses when she's Michelle Myers and Shelly Myers. And, you know, it's I think those do make a difference in the performance. Yeah. If nothing else, makes you feel like you're the character more or whatever. Yeah, there is definitely that. I was looking to see what other roles you played. I have not fully updated this wiki yet. I need to. I look, you were in privates as that slightly annoying older lady. That was fun. Where you were one of the friends of Cordelia. Oh, I forgot about And you just kept talking over everybody. Yes, I loved her. She was so much fun. Yes, (laughs) I enjoyed that as well. You also played the bodacious bruiser in Adults of the Top Notch Tower. That may be my favorite role. Yeah, that was. Is it safe to say she was a villain? Oh, yeah. Okay, I will I will say it was kind of problematic for me because I had never played anyone quite that evil before. Mm. And it was like, this was super fun to do, and yet somehow I still felt a little bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was fun. You That wasn't the only role in Top Notch you played. Just for your reference, this podcast is actually going live in like three weeks. We're recording oh it my. really late. Yeah, I, it's been on the schedule for a long time, but with the musical and some of the other stuff we were doing, I didn't get it scheduled, and I mm. should have. So it's going to be a quick turnaround. So... If you're keeping up with the podcast, really, you can only talk about things we did through, like, last August in detail. Oh. 
But another role you played after that, you played uh, Commissioner Decker in the Top Notch Tangler. Yeah, and which, that uh, kind of came back around to my, my doc pool of characters. Yeah. Like the, the very cool and controlled mm -hmm. sort of voice. You also have a, had a role in Universe Journey this season as a character that we haven't met on the podcast yet named Commander Kaniac. Yes. <laughs> who's also kind of a cat-like I, I feel like I trapped myself with that character, too, because the first time I got assigned to that role, I thought it was a one-off, mm. and she only had two or three lines, and, and the script said gruff, yeah. gruff but lovable. So, you know, I, I put on this voice that was kind of like this. And then I found out, oh, she's going to keep appearing and keep appearing. And that voice is a little hard to maintain if there's, like, a big paragraph. <laughs> so, so, well. There are vocal techniques you can do, so it's less rough. I know Shane had to do that with Meow Meow after, because the first couple of years it was yeah, really hurting. Yeah. And there are, I would talk to him. He can maybe give you some pointers that it may change the voice a little bit, but you'll still be basically the same voice, but not hurting yourself. Because yeah. we don't want to hurt you. Yeah. It's kind of like one of my stupid uh, human tricks has mm -hmm. always been I, I did a fairly good Marge Simpson, but I could never do it for more than like a line or two. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and in today's show, as we're recording this today, which the podcast audience won't hear for a while, you're playing a Russian princess. Yes. When Megan wrote that, she said she had you in mind for that part. And I made a note. Just like, let's see what the auditions are and whatever. But I made a note, like, if I don't get an audition I'm satisfied with, I can always go for Beth because... Well, I had a bit of an edge on that one because uh -huh. Russian is one of only two accents that I've ever actually studied, mm. like with dialect tapes and training and everything. Because when I was in high school, we did Neil Simon's Fools, mm -hmm. and my director actually brought in dialect tapes and gave us lessons week after week mm -hmm. in the uh, in the Russian accent. So I've always felt strongest in that. <laughs> What's the other one? The other one was, I'm trying to remember the name. It's a British accent. It's basically the Queen's English. It's oh, what okay. we learned for the importance of being earnest. Gotcha. And the funny thing is, I, I don't even remember the, the rules of that one that well anymore. <laughs> I just remember I had some lines like, considering that it has been... That considering that we have been engaged since the 14th of February last, and that I have only met you today for the first time, I think it is rather hard that you should leave me for so long a period as half an hour. <laughs> That's kind of similar to the accent you were doing in the Travels with Tim special episode. That you were Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I watch a lot of BBC. So. Uh, <laughs> I can't blame you. I, I enjoy a good British show here and there, too. So... How has voice acting been as a performer? I know it's a very different style of performing. And I know you still obviously want to do other productions. You're in an Ember Women's Theater production. When does that premiere? So that starts on September 6th. Okay, so I think this is going to go live right about that time. So go ahead and plug it so people can come see you at it. Yeah, so starting on September 6th, mm -hmm. Ember Women's Theater is doing a play called Always a Bridesmaid. And it is an absolutely delightful show. I described it to my mother as Steel Magnolias Without the Tragedy. <laughs> it's, oh, I love Steel Magnolias. It's basically, it's about a group of Southern women in their late 40s mm -hmm. that made a promise to each other that they would be in each other's weddings. Mm -hmm. And they did. But then there's remarriages and it just keeps going on. And it, th there's kind of this feel of, how are we still doing this? Huh. How are we still bridesmaids? <laughs> But it, it is a delightful show. Do come check it out at Mad Lab Theater, mm -hmm. which I'm sure a lot of your fans are familiar with. I would assume so. We have done an episode on the podcast called Meet the Mad Lab, as well as, you know, the Meet the Cast stuff. Tickets at madlab.net. So, yeah, I, I know the artistic director there, James Blackman, now. Uh, I love James Blackman. He's great. So they're doing some interesting things there. And I've always loved Ember. That was founded by a couple of old Mad Labbers that were sitting on the board when I was on the board there. In fact, they did steal Magnolias. It might have been their first show. I saw it, and it was wonderful. I mean, it's right up their alley. Yeah, yeah. It was either their first or second show. I think it was their first. And I remember sitting in the audience for it and just absolutely loving it. Oh, yeah. And don't even come to see me. I mean, the, the women that I'm in this show with are just fantastic. I am having so much fun with the rehearsals. Oh, good. So who's the director on that one? That would be Michael Trekis. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't know Michael. I, He's a good guy from okay. what I've seen so far. Now, bear in mind, at this point, I've only been going to rehearsals for a couple of weeks, so mm -hmm. I still don't know everybody real well, but everybody is just 
wonderful to work with. And one of the things I like about Michael that I have not experienced with a lot of other plays that I've done is in addition to in rehearsing the lines and the scenes and the blocking, we sit down a lot and we talk about these characters and like what we think their backgrounds are, what we think the dynamics of the relationship are. And I really love that he dives so deeply into this. Nice. What hobbies do you have outside of performing? Uh, so uh, I think we talked earlier about I, I do love to play musical instruments, even yep. though I don't devote enough time to get actually good at them. Mm -hmm. I also crochet a lot, mm -hmm. which I noticed the cast has worked into a few jokes about me as well. <laughs> and Thank I'm you, not so much these days as I used to be, but I am still very much a gamer. Mm -hmm. I love video games, love Xbox. I've got the Game Pass, and I will just go in there from time to time and pick out little new indie games to play. A huge Mass Effect fan. Okay. I am ridiculous. <laughs> like, I've got... I've got the little action figures on my desk, and I've got pictures of Garrus hanging up in my office. It's, I have a reputation. <laughs> do you have interest in writing? I, I do and I don't. Uh -huh. I've been told that I am a good writer, but I've never felt comfortable and creative with mm -hmm. it. Like, I sit down to try and write something, and just nothing comes out, and I get frustrated, and I'm like, Forget this. I think on my sweet spot used to be anecdotal writing, like the Dave Barry kind of stuff. Oh, okay. For a few years, I kept a, I kept an anonymous blogspot blog. Uh huh. It was originally called Pee Wee's and Peas for a while because I was a lunch lady at the time. Oh. Uh -huh. And I think it moved on to calamitous content. Mm -hmm. But in it, I would just tell weird little stories about funny things my kid did, something that happened to me that day. I, I like to say I'm kind of a Lucy Ricardo. Things tend to happen to me, hence the calamity. And I always thought those were well-written and funny, but as, as far as like writing fiction, I could never do that, and I always admired that you guys could come up with so much content. Well, I asked because you came to the writing retreat last year, and you're signed up to come again this year. And I had, I had great ideas, but mm -hmm. then it was terrifying because you'd, then you'd say, okay, cool, you, you should go write that. And I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 I'm an ideas guy. I got <laughs> smacked for that. I, I was told <laughs> we don't want to come out of the writing retreat with lots of homework. That's not the point of it. And I was like, oh, okay. And well, I still have, have that one idea I came up with at the last retreat that I want to develop. It's just mm -hmm. I find it difficult to make myself sit down and actually flesh it out. Mm. But one of these days, I might. I say you can always pick a cast member to work with. I know many of them are willing to collaborate. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, what did you get out of it? Just the getting to pitch ideas and stuff? or? Yeah, well, and... Part of me was hoping that maybe I'd find a spark in me that I didn't know I had. Like, maybe I am creative and I just don't know it. Sure. And I had a really good time, and I learned a lot about y'all's writing process while mm -hmm. I was there. And I think, you know, maybe, maybe someday when I get a little more self-confident, I'll dip my toe in that writing pool. But in the meantime, I love to come along and and get more about the process. Well, you do know that was the first time we'd ever done it last year. I did know that. And uh, that's not a process we'd ever done before. It's been mainly me writing this show by myself. Um, and I was I, always very impressed by that. I love that coming out of that, a lot more people seem to feel empowered to do writing, and I'm getting a lot more help these days, and I'm thrilled with it. I'm very happy about it. Also, because there's a lot of... No matter how creative you are, you're only going to come up with so many ideas, right? And I get pitched ideas all the time by cast members, and I love that as well. But getting to read some of the scripts these guys write, there's certainly things in there I'd never think of. But they're so many clever and funny and innovative ways. And a lot of times they'll write things that spark ideas in me and inspire me to write another episode and take in those threads that they started. So I really enjoy working in that manner. And I'm grateful that they all want to play in these environments that we all work on together so is there some aspect of the show that you want to be more involved in or or anything besides the acting or are you happy just uh, doing the acting and 
I I am honestly happiest as a performer. Yeah. So I I think I'm pretty Nothing good with where with I that. am now. Nothing wrong with that. And like I said, I might as I get a little braver, mm. dip my toe into the writing pool. Never really was interested in things like directing, though. Okay. Although I, I I love the fact that it does tend to go around and everybody gets a shot at it, but that's not for me. Just everybody that wants to. Everybody most that most wants of the people don't. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, we're not going to force anybody to do something they don't want to do. Likely story. I mean, we did hold you at gunpoint to join the troop, but now you're in. So, <laughs> is there a segment that you haven't really gotten into yet that you really like? What's your favorite segment? My favorite segment. Honestly, I, it's, it's going to sound common, but I, I love Universe Journey. Mm-hmm. I really do. I was always, I, I wouldn't say a huge fan, especially not sitting in front of you, because I know how, <laughs> how into Star Trek you are. But I, I always loved Star Trek Welcome up. all levels of fandom. Yes. Yes. I'm not <laughs> no, a gatekeeper. No gatekeeper. We're not Star Wars. We don't gatekeep. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do love it. And for for all my jokes about how I got myself stuck with this voice, I, I really like Kaniac. Yeah. I can't wait to see where she goes. Yeah, I do plan so. to develop those characters that she interacts with more. You're getting a whole episode here this fall to perform <gasps> that's just that crew. So Spoilers. we'll see. Spoilers. Yeah, well... That nobody knows who that is yet, but <laughs> we just know that they're out there looking for Kake because the first Eva Lee scene's already aired. So they're just out there. They're looking for Kake. Who knows? Who knows what that means? Who knows? Or who they are or what they're doing, where they are. Anyway, any other segments that you're the itching to be in that you haven't really gotten to play in yet? Uh which ones haven't I? I feel like I've been in just You've about You've been in everything. a lot of them. Uh, I've even been in Daniel Kravitz. You have. I got immediately murdered. Well, that happens a lot in Daniel Kravitz. <laughs> Especially if your character's a villain or non-human. They don't last all that long. Say, I was going to run down the list of segments and see. Yeah, you've been in Kravitz. You've been in Solvent Theater. You've been in Life with a Voice Actor. Have you been in Morning Show? Yes, okay. I, I currently have yes, a recurring Yes, you role do. In. Of course. Why did I even <laughs> ask that? It's because your wiki's not up to date, and whose fault is that? It's mine. Well, it's, it's certainly mine. not mine. It's mine. Have you been a Mystery Dream Team? I, you know what? I have not. Yeah, I don't think you have. Oh, uh, there's some episodes of that coming up with some guest roles available. And I don't know if you've been in Space Dirt. I'm in Space Dirt currently. Yes, you are. <laughs> this, is, this is my problem. Do you, you need a little coffee I, here, Jimmy? I don't drink coffee, but I need something, clearly. I have had you need to this start. Morning. I'm really tired. No, I had a Pepsi Zero this morning, so I should be awake. Or maybe now I'm crashing because it's been enough time. So, yeah, you've been in, I think, every segment that we're currently doing except for Mr. Dream Team of our regular segments. So that's pretty impressive for the short time you've been with the show. Well, you it better, takes people better a little get on longer. that... Uh... Jimmy, got to get that Mr. stamp Dream card. <laughs> now, is there a prize when I get my whole stamp card filled out? No, there's oh, not. I'm sorry. Dang it. <laughs> As we wrap up here, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Something I should have asked about and dropped the ball on? I feel like I've already talked your ear off. I, It was so strange. I was so nervous coming into this. Why? I really, I, I don't know. I, I've listened to a million of these because, of course, I came in like part... Troop candidate, part fangirl. I, mm-hmm. for a while there, I was listening to the podcasts every single day before classes, trying to Why'd get you caught stop? up. Get out! No I'm kidding. I, I'm I'm caught up, of course. <laughs> but um, yeah, and so I had listened to a gazillion other Meet the Cast episodes, mm-hmm. and I just felt like, oh, I'm not going to be that interesting. Like I can't talk about myself that long. <laughs> just casual conversation. <laughs> Well, I see that now. (laughs) And you just have to pretend I'm not a mean, evil dictator while we have the conversation. That's the only requirement. Yes, Jerome is not a a mean, evil dictator at all. Good, I can put my knife away now. So Grace asked you a question to answer on your Meet the Cast. I'm not going to have you ask a question for the next person because I have no idea when that is or who it may be. But um, maybe I'll remember to come back, hopefully, and ask you then. But Grace's question, when you play the dues... Do you actually think words in your head for the meows, or are you just making onomatopoeia and trying to match the tone and the emotion of the line? So I wasn't thinking in terms of actual words for the lines, but I did always think about like what was the general message or feeling that the dudes is trying to convey in that point. So yes, they had inflection and and emotion, but no, I didn't have any lines in mind. Okay, great. 
Thank you very much, Beth. It's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. And Thanks for talking to me. Talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll be back next week with something. <laughs> It's All Been Done Radio Hour number 485, Meet the Cast number 42, features our newest troop member, Beth Muir, and her conversation with creator Jerome Wetzel. We'd like to thank our amazing host performance space, Boxland. Check out our website at iabdpresents.com, and don't forget to support us at patreon.com slash iabd. A mere $5 donation gets you access to past and upcoming raw audio to our monthly shows, as well as bloopers, short stories, and exclusive performances. Have a great week. It's All Been Done presents... Who's Got the Time?